And hello everyone, this is Liz Burnett, founder of Kingdom Elegance Magazine. You can find us at www.kingdomelegance.com. I have with you my beautiful sister, Miss Helene Cruz. Oh boy, we have a, a <laughs> wonderful, wonderful conversation for you today. Yes. Now, our topic is the power of networking. I wanted to introduce you, reintroduce you for some of those who've been with us before. Helene Cruz is an accomplished Christian author and holds the title at Pace University of Director Employee Relations, Pace University Career Services. I again am Liz Burnett and my background includes 15 plus years in human resources, recruiting, resume writing, and coaching. But together, we bring you our career success series secrets from a Christian and biblical perspective so that you reach your professional goals for the kingdom and to make an impact in our world. Amen. 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 <laughs> so uh, part one of our discussion, Helene is going to give you wisdom. She's going to give you tips, stories, and scriptures relating to our topic today of the power of networking, followed by myself. We're going to conclude in prayer for you and your career success. Hello, my beautiful sister. <laughs> well, hello, right back at you, beautiful sister Liz. Thank you. Thank you. It's great to be back. I just want to thank yes. you. Um, all of the programs have been wonderful. And I thank that. Thank you that you've invited me back for a third time. Yes. Um, and it, it's just been a blessing uh, for me. Yes, uh, to be here. Uh, the first time um, I was on the program, we were talking about the books that I've written. The second time um, we started talking about career related topics, career management, career development. Um, and then we're just spinning off the monthly series. So um, yes. I'm just super excited to be here. And um, yes, networking. Yes. So basically, I just want to refer back uh, to last month's broadcast. Mm -hmm. um, we touched upon it. And really, the story began um, talking about how when you and I met yeah. and uh, you were my client. Um, this was almost 15 years ago. This December will make 15 years. Wow. So really, you are part of my network, even though you're you're part of my family, my spiritual That's family right. as a sister in Christ. Yes. You are part of my network because we started off professionally. Yes. So basically the power of networking, it's not just job related. It can morph. It could develop into a sisterhood. It could develop into friendship. For some people, it develops into marriage. Who knows? That's so right. Really, you know, there is power in networking. And, and basically what networking is, is building relationships. And for the most part, it's professional. How you meet yes. people to develop your career or your business. You know, it really under, under the umbrella of professionalism. Um, but you and I are here to talk about really networking from a godly uh, Christian perspective, because we are women, women of God, and I will share wisdom and discernment, but it, it you know, it comes from the Holy Spirit. It's not me. It, you know, it's not me because if, if, if I is in, operating in my own strength, um, it would be fleshly wisdom and discernment. Now there's nothing wrong with that. God gives us those gifts, but when it's from the Holy Spirit, you really want to go in using the gifts of the Holy Spirit to discern when to network, who to network with, how to develop, how to grow, wisdom and who to reach out to, who not to reach out to. So basically it's mm -hmm. the, the setting the, the stage um, for our conversation today. Mm -hmm. and, and what I've really learned is just in life in general, on our journeys um, as, as women of God, yeah. um, God assigns us to certain people Um whether it's for a reason, a season, or a lifetime. We've heard that, right? That's true. And then people are assigned to us as well. Yes. So I truly believe that we were assigned to each other. Absolutely. And, you know, initially, I, you know, you were my client, but I believe that you were assigned to me, as I mentioned last time, because my mother had just um, 
at the time we met two weeks later, my mother passed away. Mm -hmm. So it was you who was going to be praying for me. And professionally, we had a professional relationship, mm -hmm. um, but you were praying for me. And then later on, I learned that you were Christian and the rest is history. So really networking is, again, that's not always going to happen, but we, it was ordained. It was God ordained. You mm -hmm. were assigned to me and then me to you to pray yeah. through things throughout our time walking together. So I'm going to start off, and you and I talked about this. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to share certain scriptures, but really, I just want to, you know, we're talking about wisdom and yes. what better book in the Bible provides wisdom than Proverbs. Mm -hmm. um, and the beautiful thing is that Proverbs, there are 31 chapters in Proverbs, and the last chapter is Proverbs 31, which is about a godly woman. That's right. So our recommendation is really, and we may quote some from scriptures from, from Proverbs, but our recommendation is to read Proverbs, if you can, a proverb a day. Um, because there are 31 chapters. So, you know, most of the months have 31 days. So I believe God created, designed that, allowed those books to be written, 31 of those books, for one for each day of, of the month. And again, not every month has 31 days, but um, right. our recommendation is to read a proverb a day each yes. morning. Amen. I <laughs> love that. Um, and the beautiful thing is God put upon my heart and I, I uh, discovered uh, a ministry called Proverbs 31 Ministries years ago. It was been, it's been years since I've been reading their, their devotions. Um, and a couple of months ago, God put it on my heart to share those devotions with X amount of people every morning at the crack of dawn. But, <laughs> but it, it, it's a blessing for me as well as those who receive those, those devotions. It's a daily devotion. Yeah. So Proverbs 31, yes. check them out online. So a yes. proverb a day. Amen. So any, any thoughts before I continue? Well, first of all, uh, brothers and sisters, my sister Helene, so I'm one of the recipients of, of receiving the Proverbs 31 devotional, and it is such a blessing. The titles alone help to get my mind on the right path. I agree with you, my sister, because I, I met a seasoned woman of God years ago who said the very same thing that you said. Now she had her separate uh, time with God where she would do certain scriptures, but every single day she did a proverb where she read a proverb. She said that was part of her every day. And I will tell you, this woman of God, who was probably in her late 60s, 70s, you could tell this was mm -hmm who had the Lord inside. She was walking, talking. Uh, she had a peace about her because she started her day with God. So I, I believe your advice is amazing. Mm -hmm. We need to start with God. We need to be in the Bible every single day. So thank you for that amazing uh, idea, wisdom about starting with Proverbs, adding that and incorporating that with your time with God. Oh, yes, a proverb a day. I, I don't want to say keeps the devil away, but I'm, I'm trying to be cute. But I you know, love that. <laughs> proverb a day keeps the devil away. Devil away. Amen. <laughs> so, no, no really, really, because of the wisdom that comes from Proverbs. Yes. And there's Proverbs on every different topic you can yes. think of. So, a proverb a day. But I want to go to another scripture, actually two scriptures that are, one appears in Matthew, the other in, in Luke, but they're basically the same, in essence, the same. The yes. first uh, scripture is Matthew 7, verse 12, mm. um, it, as it relates to networking and building and growing and how to connect with people. So yes. Matthew 7, 12, in everything, therefore, treat people the same way you want them to treat you, for this is the, this is the law and the prophets. 
Um, and then in Luke 6, verse 31, treat others the same way you want them to treat you. And bottom line is, you know, do unto others as you want done to you is what we learned in, in Catholic school. We, you know, you and I were raised Catholic. So right. we learned that you do unto others. Like, how how do you want to be treated? How do you want people to approach you? Yes. Um, is the way that you want to approach others with respect um, with giving, pouring out to others and, and others will pour out, you know, maybe not equally, not, you know, mm -hmm. it may not be reciprocal there on the spot, but when you start treating others as you want to be treated and pouring in and pouring out and giving, you're going to see, and if other people don't reciprocate, if other people right. don't connect with you or network in that same fashion, mm -hmm. you will see God pour out to you and God will give to you because you're honoring his word by treating others the way you want to be treated, treating others with respect and giving and being mindful of their time and their attention and their energy and their space. Yes. Um, so really, you know, we talked last month about, you know, getting out of your comfort zone, connecting with others, approaching others. There's a way to do it. There's a there's an art to networking, but really it's developing relationships. And when you develop relationships, it's it's step by step. It's not bam, you know, Johnny on the spot. It really is a step by step. So you know, the golden rule really treat others and people say treat others the way they want to be treated. But oh, you want to treat people the way you would want to receive it, you know, with that same that's respect. That's you know, it's all about respect and mindfulness. A lot of we hear about, a lot about mindfulness now, yeah. um, really being mindful of others and keeping others at the forefront of your mind, basically. Amen. So those are the first two scriptures. Any comments, Liz, or, or anything to add? Yes. Well, you know, you and I, you were saying we grew up as Catholics. Uh, later on, uh, Sis and I uh, became born again Christians. And one thing that I began to see as a born again Christian, and I don't know if you saw this too, Sis, but I started, I started to really see people as being precious. God made these people. God made everyone. And so um, piggybacking off of what you said about treating others the way you want to be treated. Um, I would also say, remember that they are, they were made by God. And so love them, uh, love who they are, love who they can be, even if they're not where they need to be. All of us are trying to become what we're trying to be. Know, know that they are precious in God's sight that he made them. So treat, like you were saying, treat others the way you want to be treated. Treat them yes. the way God, the, the fact that God made them. So, so really uh, respect that and honor that and love that person. Realize that they were made by our heavenly father, just like we were. And thank you for that that wonderful um, addition and that comment because it, it, it convicts me because sometimes I don't always love them like Jesus loves them. I'm gonna, oh, be, honest. I'm gonna be honest. <laughs> so yeah, yeah sometimes we, we have to take that step back and yeah. say, I'll give you an example. Something happened recently and I was just like, I was a little taken aback by, by an exchange that I had with someone. And I was like, oh, like, you know, you get in the flesh and like, oh, oh yes. God had to convict me to the point where I was like, you know, going on and on about it. And I had a, he allowed me, not that he made me, God allowed me to spill coffee all over myself and all over the place because I was so, bah, 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 bah. I had a big spill. Oh, because he wanted to splash, like splash me to realize like what you're thinking and what you're going on and on about is not from me. Mm -hmm. And you need to love that person and be mindful that that person is not you. That person is not in the Lord. That person does not know what she does or he does or they do. Like the, the, like Jesus said on the cross, forgive them, Father. They know not what they do. So especially when someone's not in the Lord, they don't yes. have the, the, the Holy Spirit in them to guide them. So I really, the conviction came with, with the whole large coffee beans. <laughs> all over the place i'm like okay i get the picture yeah you need really to wake me up wake me up and smell the coffee so per se you know really because the person i was going on and on about is like 
that person's not you. They're not going to react the way you're acting. They're not going to do what you're doing. They're yes. not going to conduct themselves the same way. And you're expecting something that's not realistic and not why are, and not from me because they're they're not in me. They're right. not in. Me. You have to love them anyway. Meet them where they are. Can I say this? I love you. What you sure can. Sis, you <laughs> sure something so profound just now because this is a, an excellent reminder for all of us. When we are in the marketplace, it's not church for most of us. So we have to realize if we own our own companies or if we are mm -hmm. out in the marketplace, we are dealing with Christians, yes, but we're also dealing with non-Christians and we have to know how to navigate uh, navigate those waters as well and uh, know how to talk to people uh, because we will be in environments and, and speaking of networking, when we're going out and networking, we will mm -hmm. be in environments with non-Christians. So we have to know how to talk to, to all types of people. Oh yeah, yeah, because it, it's true. Not everybody is 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 from has the same background, the yeah. same culture, not just the same faith, but the same culture, the same upbringing, the same style, the same attitudes, the same convictions. Oh, you know, yes. so we really have to go in with you know, not everybody is you, not everybody yes. is like you, um, not everybody's going to do what you do. You know, you have to go in with that head, with that mindset. Um, but you can't go in alone. And that leads me to the next scripture from, oh, we're, we're taking it to the Old Testament now, um, Ecclesiastes uh, chapter four, verses nine through 12. It's a little bit chunkier than the others, three verses. Um, and I love it. And this kind of spins into some of what Liz wants to share later. Mm -hmm. Two are better than one because they have a good return for their labor. For if either of them falls, the one will lift up his companion but woe to the one who falls when there is not another to lift them up. Furthermore, if two lie down together, they keep warm, but how can one be warm alone? Mm. So basically, and, and you're going to um, expand, and if you want to expand upon it now, so you, you can do it. It's your show to do it. Also. <laughs> It, it leads me, you know, when I read that scripture, even though it's Ecclesiastes, it brings me back to a key scripture that I, I referenced. There's a chapter in my first book, An Eternal Affair, that's called ISI, Iron Sharpens Iron. And it is from Proverbs, yes. one of the Proverbs, Proverbs 27, 17, um, as iron sharpens iron, so it is with man. And we talked about it last month. Um, but that's one of the scriptures that's key for Liz as well. And she, if she's going to share on it now or later, I'm going to turn it to her to, to, to uh, add to that. Yes. The iron sharpen iron um, scriptures. So Proverbs 27, 17, everyone uh, iron sharpens iron. So a man sharpens the continents of his friend. I, I, I could say this later. And, and talk about it later, but I did want to say this one thing. You never know with your networks. Uh, we were talking about different environments that we might be in. Uh, some of our networks will include Christians only. Some of them will include Christians and non-Christians. One thing about Helene and I is that we were in a network and we didn't even necessarily know it at the time. But the beautiful thing is we are, Helene and, our, our, Helene and I are truly Proverbs 27, 17, because what started as a professional network for you and me, mm -hmm. it ended up being a sisterhood where we have literally over the past, over a decade now, we have labored with each other uh, during prayer. Yeah, been there for each other during some very tough times in both of our lives. You never know where your networks will end up being. That's what I would say about that particular scripture. Wow, and I'm and I'm glad you spoke on it now, yes. um, because really it takes me back to those days. And then there were seasons where you and I would text and leave messages every now and then, but we weren't, we weren't talking the way we were in the beginning and that's okay. Life right. leads you in different directions, but it leads you back. Sometimes it doesn't. 
Um, but we had a prayer going on once a week. Yes, we did. Um, for a while. I think it was a, the yeah. year before you got married. I think we prayed for a, a solid year on Saturdays, 10 o'clock on 10 a Saturday. I remember. Um, and we prayed about everything, like just everything. <laughs> everything. Yeah. Now, again, not may you all be fortunate to have that ISI partner. And again, ISI, Iron Sharpens Iron is not from me. A lot of these things I take from other people and I, I don't take the credit, mm -hmm. but we are ISI partners. We're sisters in Christ. We prayed, we were in the trenches, like the prayer yes, yes. Trenches, trenches together. Um, and we sharpened one another, but we also not only sharpened, meaning we, we made each other better. We made each other sharper. We yes. also were real with each other too. When we were wrong, yes. we were wrong, you know, so we, we weren't afraid to, to, to say to one another, you may want to do it this way or hmm, what's going on, what's happening there. Yes. So it really was a rich time. Still is. Still, still. is. We're doing, we're doing this now. Who knew? Yes. Who knew we were going to do this? Yes. So, 15 years later, we're in it, but we're in it differently. And we're in it better together. We're wow. in it together, together. Wow. So, and, and I love that. And it leads me to the next uh, uh, scripture. Yes. I love yes. that we are, we never, we're never puffed up. We're, we're, we always encourage and exhort one another. And um, we, sometimes we overdo it and we're like, oh, you're yeah. so beautiful. You're so great. You're so this, and it's, and we're not blowing smoke. That's just we love each other and we want to yes. we want to lift each other up. Yes, yes. Um, but it leads me to my next scripture pro again. Proverbs, love yes. those proverbs. Um, proverbs twenty five verse six. Now this one kind of spins into a couple of other scriptures for me. Mm -hmm. um, so Proverbs twenty five six is do not exalt yourself in the king's presence and do not claim a place among his great men. It is better for him to say to you, come up here, than for him to humiliate you before his nobles. Now, hmm. there's a lot that could be taken from that passage, and it, it's kind of chunky, and it's only one verse. But basically, yes. what I walk away with is that, you know, don't don't lift yourself up. Don't puff yourself up. Don't don't champion yourself somebody the king or 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 the lord will bring you up yes. in due season like you don't need to, to to toot your own horn because and that's how i live i don't want to toot my own horn god is going to toot it or other people are going to toot it like i i learned that even before i became a christian my my parents mm -hmm. were very unassuming still are mm -hmm. um never brag never you know showboated as they say and it leads me to, to two other scriptures where matthew 23 12 mm -hmm. um with those who exalt themselves will be humbled mm -hmm. and those who humble themselves will be exalted right um and then Matthew 20, verse 16 is the last shall be first and the first shall be last. Mm -hmm. So all of those three come together. And how does it relate to networking? Yes. I've been around people networking and maybe you have Liz as well. Secular environment, environment even a Christian environment in a church even yes. where there's people who are like, look at me, look at me. Now, maybe they're not saying it. Maybe they're doing something that screams, look at me, look at me, or, or they want the, the king or the pastor or the CEO or whatever to look at them and then outshine and push others to the side. Mm -hmm. Whereas for me, and even in God's economy, not just Helene's economy, but God's economy is like, no, the, the, be last and I'm going to make you first. Yes. Humble yourself, be quiet, and I'll I'll lift you up. And, and I'll I'll do it better than you're going to do yourself. Because if you do it yourself, when you do it yourself, you're going to splash coffee all over yourself. Yeah. Like God reminds me, it's like, you know, you're going to trip yourself up, really, if you do it yourself. Very true. So I, I want to share a couple of examples that still these three individuals to this day mean so much to me. And they probably don't even know how much they mean to me. And the word that comes up is unassuming. Hmm. And it leads me to the first person who was deceased, passed away, a uh, co-worker of mine. And I wrote about him in Joy Comes in the Morning. Mm -hmm. um, the name of the chapter is Unassuming. And it's the shortest chapter in the book, but it's one of the most profound for me because I didn't know the person that long, knew him for two years, maybe two and a half years. Mm -hmm. But he was a colleague who was so unassuming, so backseat. 
didn't need to be in the spotlight, although he had so many credentials that he never talked about that other people would share with me. And I was like, oh, I didn't know. Like he really was a well accomplished individual, mm -hmm. you know, well-rounded, educated, um, prosperous, you name it, but you would never know. You would never know. He talked to you like, met you where you were at. He yes. met you where you were at and he was so grateful, so humble. And to this day, I love, I, I remember him and I love the way he was with us because he was beloved because he was a humble oh. man, a humble mm -hmm. man, but he knew a confident man, confident, but he was humble. He was yes. comfortable in his own skin. Yes. And two other individuals, I had a, a, a senior VP one, one years ago at my first job, I was, I was in my twenties, my mid twenties. Mm -hmm. And he was a man that he didn't walk around like I'm the SVP, I'm the SVP. Yes. He would do stuff that we would do. He would roll his sleeves up and do stuff that I would do as a coordinator. He's like, no, I have to learn how to do this. I have to know how to do it. It's my department. I need to understand every operation. Yes. And I'm like, really? <laughs> so to this day, I respect that. And his style was, I have to, I got to, I got to know what my part-time people, what my assistants are doing, what my admins are doing. I have to know the functions. I really have to. And, and, and he appreciated those functions. Yeah. They weren't menial to him. Yes. They, he wasn't dismissive. He wasn't like, oh, you're just a coordinator or, oh, you're just a peon. No, yes. it was the opposite. He valued everyone. Awesome. And then I have one more and I, I want to turn it to you, Liz. Um, a pastor, one of the first pastors that I had when I became a Christian, unassuming to the hundredth power, mm -hmm. where this man, let me tell you, ran shepherd. He was a shepherd of a large church, mm -hmm. knew people from other churches, sometimes, you know, some of the mega churches. This man knew people and fellowshiped and 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 broke bread with and yeah, did yeah. ministry, did life with people, what was under, in, in a way, under a public eye. Yes. You would not know it. You would not know it because he met everyone and treated everyone with dignity, respect, everybody, knew people in his congregation, even to the visitors who were just in and out. Yeah. His eye was on everyone and he cared about everyone. And when he was allowed to have the front seat at whatever, he took the back seat. And sometimes when in your network, when you are that person, when you show up like that, people appreciate that because you're real and you're connecting, you're building and you're not wearing your credentials and your, your PhD and your, your MD and your whatever, whatever yes. on your sleeve. That's right. So I just, those three, those scriptures just ring for me. Like a lot of the people in my network are those types of people because I don't want to be around people who are going to blow their own horn all the time. Never. I mean, what do you, so basically, how do you build when someone's building themselves up? Oh, sis. You pray, for them. You pray for them. Like, please, yes. Lord. Yes. <laughs> all right. I'm going to turn it to you because I've said too much. No, you didn't. You said so many amazing, your wisdom is so profound. And ladies and gentlemen, uh, Helene has been doing this for decades. So she has, uh, even though she doesn't look like she's been doing it for decades. <laughs> a lot of makeup, a lot of makeup. <laughs> you are absolutely beautiful, but it's true. She brings uh, to you years of wisdom. She's observed and worked with people and served people on all levels, on both sides, from the employer side to the um, sides of the students to the sides of, I mean, there's so many facets of networks that you've worked with. You talked about something, again, that was profound about puffing yourself up because men and women of God, as God is uh, increasing us, you know, when we serve him, uh, God will open up doors for us, but we have to be careful. Uh, you were saying not to puff ourselves up. And what came to me was the scripture about pride comes before the fall. 
Yes. So we have to be careful not to be prideful, not to make ourselves that golden calf. And to mm-hmm. ourselves. Mm-hmm. When we come into to work at the job, or maybe we have our own ministries, or maybe we have our own businesses, is to serve people. That is the number one thing. Now, of course, we get blessed as well, but we should always have the heart, a servant's heart, just like Jesus. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We, he is our role model. God is our role model. We have to serve people. And when we do so, like you were saying, sis, with a humble heart, others will start to say, hey, we want to work with Helene because Helene has this gifting. Or we want to work with you, brother and sister, because you have that gifting. You Mm -hmm. watch the doors open. You never have to puff yourself up. God will do it for you. He will open up the doors that no man and no devil can close yes. in the name of Jesus. So yes. I love that. I love that. Um, let's see. I did have a couple of scriptures. Uh, and you and I, I think of, about you and I uh, as <laughs> being the example of some of these scriptures here. But I, I want that really, <laughs> that really uh, captured me. First Thessalonians 5.11. Mm. For comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as also ye do. And um, I wanted to tell you, brothers and sisters, uh, as God opens up your networks, whether they are secular or a combination of secular and Christian, you will have the opportunity to cultivate, cultivate each other. Mm-hmm. Old relate relationships. So let it not just be yes. um, I'm building myself up. Mm. Look at the needs of others as well in your network. Now, did, did you have anything to add to that, sis? Um, I'm just going to throw in because you said cultivating, which means growing, and then yes. you're bringing all the people along with you. Yes. Um, so Romans 14, verse Verses, verse 19, so then we pursue the things which make for peace and the building up of one another. Really, it's not about what you're gaining because you're going to gain and then you can bring people up the ladder with you. That's right. You really want to open the doors. Your door, the door got, was open for you. Open the door for someone else. You know? Exactly. You know, and you'll find as uh, we go, and we've been saying this a lot, this is a, a, a ongoing theme, it seems. For us in this discussion, Proverbs 27, 17, iron sharpens iron. So a man sharpens the contents of his friend. So we're going to see um, iron sharpens iron. uh, As you meet up with other Christians, they will help you and you can help them in the area of spirituality as it relates to work. But you will also meet uh, non-Christians as well who might be able to help you in other areas. You know, Mm -hmm. you are the light. You are the light in the midst of darkness. And even non-Christians will be very attracted to that because we are people with uh, honor. We honor other people. We honor the work that we do. We don't try to cut corners. We we do Mm -hmm. the best that we can. Uh, We appreciate what God has given us with our opportunities. We don't cause drama and chaos. That's not what we do as Christians, right? (laughs) So you watch as um, God starts opening doors for you with even non-Christians. They're going to say, you know what? This individual, they don't cause me trouble. They just come to work and they just do their job and they do an amazing job. I'm going to open up this opportunity. Yes. I, I want to promote them. So you're going to start to see how even non-Christians are going to start to cultivate you in your profession. You will start to see doors opening for you. OK, they're going to start opening and take them again with a humble heart and thanks. Yes. Again. Thank the Lord every step of the way as you will be able to sharpen. Uh, others and others will be able to sharpen you and you will see doors beginning to open. And I want to say another one, 
uh, and I see you and me in this, sis. Galatians 6, 2, bear ye one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. Mm -hmm. So what I wanted to say about that was you never know what your networks might become. Mm -hmm. You might join an organization and meet a brother or sister who will be a lifelong friend. That's what happened to Helene and me. And it was not something that was expected at all. I thank the Lord for um, BNY Mellon and the opportunity to work yes. with our services because had it not been for that particular role, I never would have met Helene. I was in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Helene was in New York. Okay. Yes. So you never know what God will do in opening the doors of your network. You might meet lifelong friends. Like you were saying, you might meet your spouse. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. You, you never know what God is going to be. So cultivate your friendships, mm -hmm. cultivate these networks. That uh, person that you are networking with might be end up being a lifelong friend. Okay. Amen. Uh, did you want to say anything before I, I wanted to share? You hit the nail on that. You well, you always hit the nail on the head. But that particular point, oh, I remember so. you mentioned B, BNY Mellon um, when we worked together. I, I'm at. I was at. Still am at Pace, but you were at yes. BNY Mellon, Pittsburgh, and New York. Who thought? Who would have thought that we would have such a rich relationship? Now there's another situation where, and this person lives in Ohio, mm -hmm. but I was unemployed. And I was being very picky. My and I, I was unemployed because I was prideful. I was mm -hmm. prideful. God had to humble me and get me ready to come to Christ. Because like months yes. later, I came to Christ because I had a big attitude. I thought, yeah, I'm gonna counsel and I'm gonna do what I want to do and I'm gonna mm -hmm. get the job I want. Yeah, right. Okay. So I was very picky. I was getting job offers, but I was very picky because I wanted a certain job. So I'll never forget, I got an, I got an interview and an offer to work someplace. I won't mention the name. Mm -hmm. um, but my And I didn't want it. I wanted another job that I didn't get mm. because of the prestige. There was prestige in that other job. Meanwhile, the job, the company where I was going to be working was prestigious too, but there was more prestige somewhere else. Yes. Hence... Hence the pride. Okay. So my my spiritual sister, my little one, because I have a spiritual family, the youngest sister of the spiritual family says, Helene, take that job that you were offered. Don't, don't, you didn't get the other one, but take the, don't turn it away. You need, you need a job, right? Like you need money. Like, like, hello? like I, I don't see any other offers coming your way. Right. And she says, take the job because you don't know who God wants you to meet there. Oh, Okay. So I took the job and two months later, three months later, got saved. And then a couple of months later, all hell broke loose to the mm -hmm. hundredth power, right? Oh, yes. But I met a woman. I met a lot of people, but I met a woman who would become my mother in Christ. Oh. My M I call her MIC, mother in Christ. If I didn't take that job, I wouldn't have met her. So... I was hemming and hawing, as my mother used to say, I was hemming and hawing. I didn't want this job. Why didn't I get the other job? And da, da, da. So mm -hmm. my little sister says, you need to take that job. You need money. Plus, you don't know who God wants you to meet. And I would have missed the boat. I would have missed the boat on a rich. And she lives in, she lit, worked in, in Manhattan and then moved to Ohio two years later. We're still family. Oh, my We're God. still family. And we started off with, hello, how are you? Exchanging pleasantries. Yes. But then something happened. All yes. hell broke loose yes. in her life and in my life. And we became mother and daughter in Christ. Oh. To the point where, and she's African and I'm, oh, you know, yes. Puerto Rican, Italian, Jewish, American. Right. Um, two different cultures, multiple cultures in my case. But people couldn't figure out why we were so close. They're like, why are they so close? Like we were, we became inseparable. So you don't know, again, it's not going to happen with everyone you work with or everyone you meet in your network, but don't miss out. Like if God is prompting you to connect with someone or work someplace, listen to the prompting of the Holy Spirit, because I would have missed it. I would have missed it. And Liz, Liz heard the prompting of the Holy Spirit to, to pray for me. Yes. 
my hour of need, and that grew our our friendship into a, into right. familyhood. So that's, that's what all I have to say. I have a lot to say, but that's all oh, I have to say. <laughs> you know what? You you said it, sis. It, you just never know, and you've been there for me. Yeah during some very dark times in my life. And I'm telling you, uh, the Holy Spirit has spoken to Helene to contact Liz. I need to call her. Uh, so it, it, you have been there for me. I know this uh, woman of God, your spiritual mom, has been there for you during times. We've been there for each other. We've helped sharpen each other from all aspects of our lives, okay? From financial to spiritual, you know? And um, so it's it's important, uh, again, to cultivate these networks that you build. Now, I did want to mention some practical, Helene too, we want to talk to you about some practical tips of networking. So we're going to talk about that as well. And sis, I'm going to mention some, and I want you to join me if you think of any mm -hmm. networking tips uh, and types of organizations that people can join. So depending on where you are, whether you are in school, trade school or college, high school, or your mid-career uh, or beyond, I think it's very important to join industry affiliated mm -hmm. because for, for many reasons. First of all, you're networking with people in your industry. You understand each other. This is your passion, whatever it is. That's your passion. You're going to meet people and you never know if those industry affiliated networks yes. might open up other doors, including mm -hmm. jobs. So if you're in between a job or you're in trade school or in college or in high school, you never know what uh, those opportunities may lead to in that networking within the industry organization. It's worth the investment. It's worth the investment. Sometimes these uh, industry organizations can be uh, $100. Sometimes they're more. I'm in one. I'll give you an example, guys. Um, I uh, One of the things that I do is resume writing. So I am in an organization for resume writers. What has been so amazing about that organization is that it's opened up the opportunity to take classes for free. So yes, I do pay yearly, keep my uh, certification up, but I learn about the different styles of resumes that are considered best practice today. So that helps me keep on top of my industry. Um, I'm able to communicate. I've had opportunities. People call me to help them. They they might uh, own their own resume writing organizations. I'm helping them uh, whenever they get extra resumes and can cannot. Happen, I help them to finish. Mm -hmm. So it's open up the opportunity for me to continue to learn and grow. Now, how about you, sis? Did you, did you have any tips? I, yes, yes. Professional organizations. Again, yeah. sometimes when you're unemployed, it's like I don't have a job. How am I going to pay? But right. it, it's a, it's a, a a nominal fee if you're a professional. Yes. Um, if you're a student, a lot of these organizations have student membership prices. Like it's $20 a year, $30 a year. It's worth it yes. because you get to connect. There's job boards for internships, entry-level full-time opportunities to yes. network virtually because everything is so virtual now. Um, and then there's local events um, for the, you know, if there's a, a, like for me, I'm in New York. If there's a New York chapter of the organization, mm -hmm. I belong to certain organizations as well. People, um, you know, cultural organizations, social organizations that are professional. Yes. But for students, check the websites to see if there's a student membership fee that you can pay if you're undergraduate, graduate student. But these are great opportunities. And I've met some great people. Again, we, we spoke the last time. Um, I've met so many people through these professional organizations. Some of them were Christian, some of them weren't, but we, right. we built family. 
um, because of the organization. There's um, fraternities and sororities, even if you belong to a fraternity or a frat or a sorority, um, and that's on your resume. Sometimes when you're interviewing, you're at a networking event. Oh, I, I was, I'm a sister or I'm a brother of this. And there's a common mm -hmm. bond and there's a connection and there are resources available as well uh, with the sororities and fraternities as well, uh, professionally, Profession uh, nationally, nationally. Yeah, you're right. And, and a lot of these sororities and fraternities within uh, certain uh, subjects. So for nurses, for example, they might have a national sorority fraternity. We do have honor uh, fraternities and sororities uh, uh, as well. So these are opportunities to network um, to, and you never know what doors those might open. Mm -hmm. um, so I wanted to mention that and you mentioned and talked about these uh, industry affiliated organizations. I also wanted to mention, and just give me your insight on this too, being on a board. So let's say that there is uh, a topic that really intrigues you and that you love. Maybe you love mentorship, for example. And there are probably many nonprofits mm. out there for young people. So if you start networking and uh, think about volunteering, joining a board, uh, there might be opportunities to network with people who have a passion for what you have a passion for. And that might be opportunities for you to serve others, but to also meet others where you have a common ground and a common passion. Oh, big so, time. Big what time. Do you think? Big time. Boards. Um, yes. Or um, volunteering, we talked about last time about how you can network when you're volunteering because you have a common bond. Um, my sister, for the longest time, because she, um, I work with college students, her her jam, so to speak, yes. uh, point was with middle school children. Yes. So she was um, she volunteered to be a big sister for big brothers and big sisters. Mm -hmm. So you know, even doing that, mm -hmm. you meet other big brothers and big sisters at events because you're going with your little sister or your little brother, and then you meet right. um, because you devote X amount of time to them individually. But then there's group events, and mm -hmm. they have boards. It's a nonprofit organization. So many nonprofit organizations that are. Um, connected, finds one that's affiliated with your interests. Yes. Um, and then get involved. You know, uh, uh, the time is so precious. People say, well, I don't have the time to do this. A couple of hours a week. That's you right. know, if you have a heart for something, you're going to, you're going to weave in the time. So um, and you never know, you never jo joining a board, which could feel like it's, it's work. <laughs> Right, right. Member. But um, again, this probably sounds like all overwhelming, but it, it, you can do either or or both or all of yeah. the above yes. depending on your, your um, time commitment. Yeah, you know, it depends on your season. I know as um, a, a single woman in my 20s, I had a lot more time. So I was able to be, to sit on um, a board. I was able to uh, do a lot of volunteering, whereas this is a different season, being yes. a, a wife and a mom. So it, things are different. But, you know, everyone has a different season. Accept the season that you're in, celebrate it, and work around that season. Season. And, you know, God is going to open doors accordingly to your season. You know, he will. No, yes. Yes. Go ahead, sis. No, no. I just wanted to say um, uh, yes, because it, it, you mentioned sing, a single woman in your 20s. I'm yes. single and, and I'm not in my 20s, but but I. <laughs> I, but I, the season that I'm in, it, you know, it's a different season because I'm caretaking and I'm working very hard, look, working long hours, I'm building in other areas, yes. um, trying to find time, the balance for social and personal. Um, I don't have the same time that I used to have to devote to like say church ministry or, or this, this and that or volunteering even. So like every little bit, even if I can do an hour or two here and there, even if it's virtual, yes. um, there was a season where I wasn't serving in church, but my, at Pace, we had a ministry. It was a fellowship and it was a ministry. So that was my 
my contribution, I would give workshops, we would do fellowships, we would do outings. Like that was really because I was at work so much. It's like, let me pour in here. You know, God says, yes. do it at your, at your, you know, sometimes your full-time job is your ministry in a way. Exactly. So exactly. accept the season and the seasons don't always stay the same. That's right. I yeah. love that. You know, something else that I was thinking um, as our networks, we have different types of networks, right? So we mentioned, for example, uh, find an industry related affiliation that you can join. We mentioned civic organizations where you might consider joining a board if you have the time, if that's the right season for you. I was also thinking of ministry as well. So that is another network. So, for example, I am a prayer intercessor. That's oh, thank God. So you, you are too. Thank God, thank God. And so there is a ministry that I listen in on uh, Thursday evening. And I don't mm-hmm. do prayer, but I I listen while I'm doing work. It's in the evening, and I will uh, listen and, and pray uh, with the sisters, the two sisters who uh, lead that particular ministry. And so you will find, it, you know, our world is different. When Helene and I first started, a lot of the networking was personal, person, but as you will see, uh, now a lot of the network might be online. So you might meet people, and that might open up doors. Uh, to do uh, fun activities, professional activities online as well. So this particular uh, fellowship is online. It's not in person. Mm-hmm. So uh, that might open up doors for, for those brothers and sisters who have a lot of time. That might open up doors for you uh, doing online type of networking as well. Uh, so there was one other thing that I wanted to say, sis, and then we can close out in prayer. I wanted to say, no matter what season you are in, never look down upon anyone. Mm-hmm. Remember, every person that you encounter uh, was made by God. Mm-hmm. So you don't look at a person and say, well, that person isn't a senior vice president. So I don't look at them. I don't talk to them. Mm-hmm. No, we as Christians, we have to value life, mm-hmm. value the creation that he made. He made us. And we are never to look down upon people. So you look at uh, anyone, no matter what level, they are in and you uh, love them and appreciate them and never look down upon them because titles mean nothing to God. And just like he um, might bless us with titles as well. If we're not careful, if we're too prideful. He could take them away as well. So we got to be careful to value life, value every single person that we come across. That's what I wanted to say. <laughs> amen. Amen. No, it's true. I had a, um, a boss one time a few years back and I would talk to the security guards. I knew them by name. I knew their family names, their wives or husbands or whatever. Um, and she's like, you know, everybody, like you, you know, the security, like she looked at me like, you know, the security guards. I'm like, yeah, I see them every day. They work with us. <laughs> so, like, so I to yeah. me that was like they what they they're, okay, they're not on my team. They're not, oh, you know, they don't report to me. They're not my boss. They're not my department head, but I see them every day. And and to the point where the security guards would ask me for prayer because they knew I was a Christian and their spouses or family members would be going through. So that's that's part of your network cuz you don't know who those people know. And you're not doing it to get, you're doing it to give, but God will give you. God will give you. Yes. Amen. Amen, sis. Oh, gosh. This has been so enlightening and such a. Yes, always. Oh, my God. Um, I just love you, my sister. I, I love you too. I love you too. My life. Yes. <laughs> and I wanted to give this opportunity as we are closing for today, and we have so much more to come. This series oh, is ongoing. It is a part of this ministry. So uh, get in uh, get in touch with Helene uh, on her web, not website, I'm sorry, email and keep mentioning your books. 
Okay, the email address um, will be Helene at cruisecontrolcoaching.com. Yes. Once again, Helene, H E L E N E, at cruisecontrolcoaching.com. And I've written two books. Um, you can email me and I can send you the links, but uh, An Eternal Affair Scriptures and Encouragement to Carry You Throughout Your Journey with Jesus. That was the first book. And Joy Comes in the Morning. And mourning is spelled with a U, as in grief mourning. Yes. So those are the two books. Um, and if you email me, I can send you those links. Amen to that. So I'll let you lead us in prayer uh, as we are closing for today, praying for every single person who listens yes. in, who yes. are on their career path. Amen. Father God, Lord, we just come as we close out this session in the name of Jesus. And we want to thank you again for such a rich time of just two sisters getting together and sharing their hearts and their experiences, the hearts and experiences that you've given them, Lord. And I thank you. I thank you for bringing Liz and I together yeah. so many years ago and, and bringing us through so many seasons. And we thank you for the network we thank you for the ability to, to share um, our expertise with the, the listeners, Father God. And we pray, Lord, that it, it blesses them, but also equips them, Father God, um, for the seasons that they're in for such a time as this, Lord. And Father God, everyone who's listening, I just pray, Lord, that their, their hearts are being touched and that they're walking away with gems and nuggets, Father God, to help them on their journey, their career journey, their spiritual journey, their personal journey, Lord. We pray, Lord, that they will continue to tune in to Liz as she uh, comes on live weekly with so many other guests who are talking about health and wellness and, mm -hmm. and decluttering and just every yes. other aspect um, uh, just that is going to help Christians and non-Christians alike, Father God. Thank you for this platform that you've given Liz, that she's sharing with so many of us and bringing those listeners, bringing the viewers, the ones who are in the season where they need to hear, thus saith the Lord, what we're saying to them, Lord, because it's a message from you, Father God. Yes, yes. So we pray again, Lord, that everyone has been enriched and enlightened, Father God. Lord, we thank you that iron sharpens iron, Father God, and that is what you've done for Liz and I. And we pray that the listeners um, have their ISI partners identified or that you will bring them people who are ISI partners, mm -hmm. iron sharpens iron, Lord. So if there's someone listening who doesn't have a person or people in their life like that, yes. we're asking today that you order the steps and bring people to them mm -hmm. that will be a part of their network professionally, personally, spiritually, Father God, financially, Father God, whatever you see fit, Father God. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I thank you for Liz and I pray that you will bless her royally for the work that she's doing in this ministry. And I'm just humbled to be a part of this. I'm not prideful. I am humble that she has chosen me, that you have chosen us for yes. such a time as this, Father God. And it's in Jesus' name I pray today that we have a blessed day and rest, rest of the weekend in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. For Thank this. you for having oh, me again. Yes. <laughs> as you all know, my sis Helene is a regular contributor now to Kingdom Elegance Magazine. So listen in, because if you are on the career path, we are two Christian women who care about you. We care about your uh, journey in your career mm -hmm. profession. We care about you spiritually as well. So we're looking out for you, okay? So stay tuned. And we'll see you. <laughs> and we'll see you next time. Love you all with the love of Christ.